from our Toronto studios, this is the Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Aisha Ashraf. Our top story tonight, Israel has launched land, sea and airstrikes on Al Mawasi, a designated safe zone according to Wafa News Agency. In the last 24 hours, Israel killed 30 Palestinians and left 105 others wounded in Gaza. Reports indicate Israeli forces used explosives to destroy buildings in central Rafah in the south. In Gaza City's Zaytun neighborhood, a drone strike on Gashku Street killed one Palestinian and injured several others. The Israeli army denied conducting any strikes in this supposed safe area where thousands of Palestinians have taken refuge. Gaza officials report that after 250 days of conflict, 15,694 children have been killed and 17,000 are without parents. The breakdown of basic services has led to nearly 330,000 tons of waste accumulating in populated areas, posing significant health risks, the UN Refugee Agency reports. The war has also degraded more than half of Gaza's agricultural land, essential for feeding its population. Satellite images analyzed by the UN show extensive destruction of orchards and crops. At least 37,232 Palestinians have been killed and 85,037 wounded in Israel's war on Gaza since October 7. Israel stands accused of genocide at the International Court of Justice, whose latest ruling ordered Tel Aviv to immediately halt its military operation in Rafah. Hundreds of illegal Israeli settlers forced their way into the Al-Aqsa Mosque complex and occupied East Jerusalem to mark a Jewish holiday, Wafa News Agency reports. The settlers performed Talmudic rituals at the complex to mark Shavuot, also known as the Feast of Weeks. Local sources estimated hundreds of settlers stormed the Al-Aqsa Mosque complex and the Al-Buraq Wall, which Jews call the Wailing Wall. Israeli forces also closed roads near the Damascus Gate area to secure settlers' entry into the complex. The Jordan-run Islamic Endowments Department in Jerusalem said 590 settlers stormed the mosque this morning following calls by extremist groups. Israeli forces also restricted the entry of Palestinian worshippers into the mosque. Al-Aqsa Mosque is the world's third holiest site for Muslims. Jews called the area the Temple Mount claiming it was the site of two Jewish temples in ancient times. In a contentious move, the House of Representatives has voted to halt American funding for the reconstruction of Gaza. The amendment to the 2025 National Defense Authorization Act, introduced by Republican representatives, passed without a recorded vote. Pro-Israel Representative Brian Mast criticized the idea of rebuilding a region devastated by U.S.-backed Israeli strikes. Justice for All, a leading American Muslim rights group, condemned the decision, emphasizing the moral obligation to rebuild Gaza and prevent further devastation. With more than $12.5 billion sent to Israel this year, questions arise about U.S. priorities in the region. Group President Imam Malik Mujahid said that with half of Gaza's buildings destroyed, most likely by American bombs, the U.S. has a moral responsibility to rebuild and prevent future destruction of life and property there. Israel has displaced roughly 1.7 million Palestinians and killed more than 37,000. Judge Ryan Nelson of the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals has recused himself from a case challenging the Biden administration's Gaza policy. Nelson had participated in a judicial delegation that toured Israel. Plaintiffs, including Palestinian human rights organizations and Palestinian and American nationals, argue Nelson's involvement compromised impartiality. While disputing these claims, Nelson stepped down out of an abundance of caution. The case accuses top U.S. officials of aiding Israel's genocide in Gaza. Bahar Azmi, legal director of the Center for Constitutional Rights, representing the plaintiffs, emphasized the importance of perceived fairness due to the case's gravity. Oral arguments were scheduled for June 10, with plaintiffs filing an emergency recusal motion Tuesday. Germany's Federal Education Ministry is investigating academics supporting student protests against Israel's Gaza attacks. 
More than 100 German academics signed a letter criticizing the response to free Palestinian protests at Berlin's Free University. North German Broadcasting reports the ministry is investigating whether the financial support provided to academics should be cut over their support for student protesters. While acknowledging their freedom of expression, the ministry's statement did not clarify if investigations against academics would cease. Protests at German universities mirror global solidarity movements with Gaza seen in U.S. and other European campuses. Senator Bernie Sanders has praised the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, or CFPB's forthcoming rules, to exclude medical debt from credit reports. He called the move an important step in the right direction. Sanders criticized the current system where families face evictions and wage garnishments due to medical debt despite the healthcare industry's massive profits. The Biden administration's new regulations will block the use of medical debt in evaluating loan eligibility and credit scores. The Bureau's Rohit Chopra said 15 million Americans, mainly in the South and low income areas, are affected by medical debt on their credit reports. The proposal will undergo public comment and its fate hinges on the upcoming election. Sanders, alongside Representative Ro Khanna, recently introduced a bill to eliminate $220 billion in medical debt. The healthcare industry made more than $100 billion in profits last year. KFF, a health policy organization, estimates roughly 3 million U.S. adults individually owe more than $10,000 in medical debt. Civil rights groups sues authorities for restoring Confederate names. Details after the break. Stay tuned and we will be right back. Assalamu alaikum, everyone, and welcome to Muslim Network TV's fashion talk show about Muslim women, modest fashion, and the modern age. Today, we're spotlighting two designers who have created brand new hijab fashion concepts from Rook as well as Bale Street. The best in business are those who provide a solution or um, solve a problem. It is so empowering to know that you can find a happy balance between entrepreneurship and your faith and also giving back to your community. To remember, like when things happen, you have to keep going. Like this is my dream, no matter what is thrown at me, I'm not giving up, so remember to pivot. And I love that in hijab fashion, it's kind of like you're being creative and you're expressing yourself through fashion and style, but the hijab part is always, always connected to worshiping Allah. Every Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern, only on Muslim Network TV. Five students backed by the NAACP have filed a lawsuit against the Shenandoah County School Board for restoring Confederate names to several schools. On May 9, the school board voted to rename Mountain View High School and Honey Run Elementary School back to Stonewall Jackson High School and Ashby Lee Elementary School, respectively. The lawsuit argues these names create a discriminatory environment for black students by celebrating leaders who fought to preserve slavery. The Reverend Cozy Bailey, Virginia NAACP president, said the board's decision supports white supremacy and racial rebellion against the U.S. The complaint contends forcing black students to attend schools honoring Confederate leaders violates their rights under the 14th and First Amendments. The issue stems from historical segregation. Stonewall Jackson High School initially was an all-white school established in 1959, unwelcome to black students until desegregation efforts in 1963. A social media post under the username JewishBiker88 sparked outrage as it depicted a man urinating on the sign of the East Texas Islamic Society Mosque and school in Tyler, Texas. The post, accompanied by the caption displayed on screen, has since been deleted along with the account. Council on American Islamic Relations Texas Chapter's Executive Director, Mustafa Carroll, condemned the attack as bias motivated vandalism. He has called for a thorough investigation by law enforcement officials. 
Carroll referenced a surge in anti-Muslim and anti-Palestinian hate crimes, with CARE receiving over 3,000 complaints in the last quarter of 2023. He urged places of worship to implement security measures outlined in CARE's best practices for mosque and community safety guide to prevent such incidents. New York police arrested scientists protesting fossil fuels on Wednesday. The protesters carried banners and chanted slogans while marching towards Citibank, the second largest financier of fossil fuels globally. Police arrested some of the protesters for blocking the bank's doors. Utah has filed a lawsuit against TikTok, accusing the social media giant of profiting from virtual strip clubs involving minors. The complaint, filed in Utah's 3rd District Court, targets TikTok Live, alleging it promotes sexual solicitation and exploitation of young people. The lawsuit, filed by Utah Attorney General Sean Reyes, alleges TikTok Live operates like a virtual strip club. The feature, introduced in 2019, allows users to purchase virtual currency and gifts, which can be exchanged for real money. Utah alleges that minors are incentivized to participate in explicit acts, with TikTok taking significant cut from transactions. The lawsuit claims TikTok fails to enforce age restrictions effectively. Utah officials condemn TikTok's practices, labeling them as money laundering and connecting victims to predators in real time. The state seeks damages exceeding $300,000 and demands an accounting of TikTok live revenue in Utah. TikTok denies the allegations, citing safety measures for teens. The court will consider Utah's motion in June. Hunter Biden plans to appeal his conviction on charges of owning a firearm while a drug user and falsifying information on a purchase form based on Second Amendment rights. Leading gun control organizations have been conspicuously silent on the matter. Politico's inquiries to seven prominent groups yielded no comments on the case or the broader legal issue of barring drug users from gun possession. An anonymous gun violence prevention activist attributed this silence to political sensitivity. The case underscores the delicate balance for gun control advocates who also support President Joe Biden's re-election bid. An Amnesty International report reveals that girls and young women fleeing Boko Haram's terror in Nigeria's northeast face unlawful military detention. The report is based on 126 interviews detailing abuses by Boko Haram and Nigeria authorities. The government is criticized for its inadequate support toward rebuilding lives. Boko Haram's history includes abducting children, killing non-believers, and forcing girls into marriage. Escaped survivors often end up detained or in displacement camps, with some reunified with Boko Haram husbands via government-run transit camps. Amnesty's director for West and Central Africa, Samir Daoud, condemns the loss of childhood and ongoing rights abuses. Yet, Daoud notes the survivors' resilience in seeking control of their futures. The Taliban administration in Afghanistan has intensified its crackdown on rival Islamic parties, aiming to quash opposition to its hardline rule. Recent actions include shutting down TV stations and educational institutions associated with groups like Hezbi Islami, Jamaat Islami, and Harakat Islami Afghanistan. The closure of Tamadan TV, allegedly affiliated with Harakat Islami, drew condemnation from global media watchdogs. The ministry claimed the station was operating on seized land. Demadon TV, which covered news and current affairs, as well as Shiite religious programming, has denied the claim. Critics view these moves as evidence of the Taliban's religious bias and authoritarian policies targeting dissenters regardless of their ideological affiliations. That's all from our Toronto studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest updates. Your support is needed now more than ever to continue our mission of providing informative, educational, and inspiring content to Muslims in North America and around the world. Donate now by visiting muslimnetwork.tv donate. For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV. Salam and good night.